You are looking at the Jared C. Monty Auditorium, or excuse me, gymnasium here at Bridgewater Rainham High School. I am John Luck with Skip Crossman, bringing you this high school girls matchup between the BR Trojans and the eighth ranked Brockton Boxers. The Boxers are ranked eighth by ESPN Boston. Skip, this is a BR team that you're seeing here that lost by 33 points the last time these two teams met up just a couple of weeks ago. So it's going to be very interesting to see what kind of BR team we're going to see out here on the floor tonight. Yeah, hopefully the second time around will uh, turn to be a little bit better for the uh, Bridgewater Lady Trojans. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a formidable test because Brockton always brings a competitive team. Um, even if they're having a down year, they're, they're a competitive group. So we'll see how BR matches up early on here. Take a look at the starting lineups for the Brockton Boxers who are in the black jerseys. Joanasia Silva Moore is number four, number 11, Tony Fairhurst. Number 23, Jelani Jackson. Number 24, Catherine Lewis. And number 35, Alaya Brito. BR wins the opening tip here. After a three-point play, Brockton regains the 
ball. Elise McGovern, number three for BR. Emily Keneally, number five. Number 22, Eslin Origi. Megan Shaughnessy, number 30. And number 34, Barbara O'Dyer. In terms of height, there's two people out there that uh, match up pretty well. Uh, Barbara O'Dyer for Bridgewater Raynham. And number 11, Tony Fairhurst, who uh, put the Brockton boxes. Megan Shaughnessy comes up with the rebound, eventually tosses it up court. Some good ball moving by the Lady Trojans early on here. Two-pointer. Elise McGovern gets the first point of the game here. Good sign. They go into that side, and they had it the, the number five, uh, Emily Keneally, had, had a little bit of an outlet, but she decided to pass it up, and it was a good, good decision. Oh, nice try by McGovern. She almost tipped it, just tipped it outside, out of bounds. Bridgewater Rainham coming off of what some might consider the most complete game effort here. The last OCL matchup, a 49-35 victory over Barnstable. That game taking place down on the team. BR. Barnstable always provides a pretty good matchup for BR. Off the mark again. Well, I have Brito trying to force her way into the paint. Instead, it's going to be a Brockton turnover. And she, missed, shot clock she missed everything on that shot. So far, Brockton 0 for 2 from the field. McGovern moving well in the open court there. Riggy gets it inside to Odaya. Nice move. You know, that could play into the into the game plan here. You get one of the Brockton boxes, the tall, the tall girl there, number 11, Tony Fierce, to get her into some early foul trouble. Bridgewater, I'm have a height advantage on the floor. But, uh, 8 8.7 rebounds in her last game against the Red Raiders of Barnstable. First shot is good. She's got an unusual delivery there, but she really gets down. Oh, you can't, can't knock success there. Two for two on the free throw line. About as good of a start as the uh, head coach Megan Driscoll could have hoped for a four nothing lead as that one goes a little strong. Good pick up there by number four, Silva Moore. And the first bucket of the game. Some full court defense being played here by Brockton. Yeah, that press it might, might you know, when, when you get some subs in, it might turn into some trouble trying to bring that ball up. Right now the starters are okay with it. Keneally for three, a long three that goes a little strong off the back of the rim. I Take thought it was going to bounce up and come back down through. Yeah. Riggy, there's a little bit of a push there on uh, Silver Moore. Five forty left to go in this first quarter. Four two, Bridgewater Rainham on top. You have to wonder early on if Br doesn't mind getting an early foul, allowing the defense to sort of get a break and set up their own defense, to try and stop Rockton from getting on a fast start here. Trojans got a box out there. They're not getting an inside advantage. Steps on. Aliyah Brito can't control. She's called for the steps under the basket there. Riggy top of the key gives into a die. She's going to go to the hoop. Oh, nice clean block. Off and off to a slow start here as Moore lands about five feet outside of the court of play here. Here is a three-point play by Lewis. That is going to be good. Just like that, Brockton back on top here. Actually on top of the first time tonight, 5-4. Trojans aren't having much trouble with that press. They're bringing the ball up all right. They're working to get some fouls here. Nearly riding the baseline. That'll be pulled down by Moore. Pushing four and a half left to go. Ooh. First substitution of the night, Sophia Perez coming in for Keneally. Trojans get the inbound there off the errant pass for the Lady Boxers.
This Brockton defense has certainly done its job over the past three games, allowing an average of about 28 points a game. Of course, last two games against big three opposition as that one the rolls out of bounds. Get off the hands of Rory, you kind of lost control there in the, in the paint there. He lone downside to having a gymnasium this size. Do you have to wait five minutes for the ball to come back anywhere <laughs> close to the quarter play? Yeah. So Moore uses a quick screen, passes it up to number 11, Fairhurst. She gets her first points of the night. It's Lady Box is a 7 4 lead. Perez on the near side, passes out to a lead. Rigi tried blocking out her own defender, but in all actuality, that defender might have actually knocked it out of bounds. I thought it did. I thought it did come off the black, uh, the block Brockton player. I think the referee is a little screened on that call. So Lady Boxers take over here. 344 left to go. This is a Brockton Boxers on top, 7-4. Not afraid to launch him. Nice retrieve, nice recovery there by. Kelly Page for Bridgewater Raynham. On the run, nice pass to the near side. However, Adaya. Perez uh, falls nice. a little short on the three-pointer. Nice try by Odaya trying to save it. Whoa. <laughs> Ladies losing lose a little bit of control. Like, like, I think when they start pressing and really push it up fast, they're outrunning the ball. Page gets this one over half court to Elise McGovern, the junior guard. Trojans have a five on four advantage. We'll see if they can box out. Pass off to the far side. Lewis hits the three. Oh, they're launching it. Second three of the night for her. Oh, nice deal. Just like that, BR may be having a deja vu moment as the putback isn't good. And number four, Silva Moore, is most likely going to the line here. Rachel Fernandez, a little bit of a little bit of contact there under the basket. And Megan Driscoll wants to talk things over with her BR Lady Trojan squad. I had to imagine the first thing that comes to mind is we that the BR Trojans start off on such a hot streak almost, that it almost looked like they ran out of gas there in the uh, latter portions of this time segment. They've got to learn to pass the ball and just break that press really quick because they have a man, they'll have a, a, a numbers advantage if they, get, they can just break that press over half court down into the basket, you'll find somebody open. You see the scoreboard there, it is 10-4 in the first quarter. Trojans got the first four points of the night. Brockton on a 10-0 run. Yeah, it's a little bit over three minutes, and the uh, Trojans have been held scoreless. 5-40, the Trojans are leading see the referee out there with his Fitbit on, tracking all the steps that he runs tonight. I'd imagine that would probably be very, very high on the app. Yeah, they get 10,000 in, in, in a game like this. I know when I do a football game, we get 15,000. <laughs> so Moore hits her first one. Seven point advantage. Make it in. Keating has that one stripped away. Top of the key. Rebound action by number 14, Rachel Fernandez. This is 
the one issue you're going to run into if you are facing a team that does have the height advantage over you, such as Brockton does over BR. So the key here is you have to try and make shorter passes. You can't try and make that risk of passing through the paint. Make some perimeter passes. And if you do that, as Jonasia Silvermore introduces herself to the fans, yeah. you try and pass it on the perimeter, then you can try and get a little bit closer and try and make those 17-foot jumpers. Once you need to get it in here, number 12, Sophie, Sophia Perez. Back out to Barbara Dyer. Breaks the, breaks the drought for Bridgewater Raynham. Good defense here by the lead. Trojans keep making that ball outside, not letting them get a pass into the paint. Keeping the ball out there in the perimeter. Oh, the lady boxes, they're just letting it fly. Natasha Elias, her first points of the game. After that long pass comes into play again, like I was saying, it's always risky to pass to the paint because that's you're going to have an extra defender waiting just in case you drive it a little bit closer to the basket. Sofia Perez. I'm sorry, Rachel Fernandez with that Four. foul. Fairhurst missed the first. Sub in for the Lady Trojans, number 30. Megan Shaughnessy comes back in. Nice box out by Megan Shaughnessy. Keating with the ball. Shaughnessy loses it. Boxers pick it up. And tear back over to Alaya Moore, Silver Moore. Controlled by the Lady Boxers, nice action. Kicks it out again, number 21, Nelly Montero over to Silvermore at the top of the key. Guarded by number 33, Kelly Page for the Trojans. Just can't quite get that outlet pass going. You have to give credit to Brockton here. They do like to play more of a disorganized basketball game here. BR, if you look on them, at them on the offensive side of the ball, when they do get the ball on their own offensive court, they like to try and get a nice offensive set, whereas Brockton will start running pick plays left and right just to try and throw you off. And that's where you see about three or four of the turnovers that we see in this first quarter. All right. Bridgewater Rams just got to handle the ball a little bit better. I mean, they're down by nine points, but it's not, they're not for lack of effort on their part. They're, they're, press, they're breaking the press and they're bringing the ball up. They're just not making those good passes in the paint area. And a team like Brockton that's coming in here, number eight in ESPN Boston, when you play basketball like they've been playing, the game starts to slow down a little bit for you, so that's where you start getting those nice passes. You know, that last offensive possession that we saw, I counted about three or four passes before there was a long three-pointer that almost went in. Yeah, they're, they're, they're launching the threes from both sides. They got at least four different per, four, four different players letting, letting them go. And they, they get some balanced scoring. They get five, uh, four people scoring for, for the boxers. Uh, Silvermore with four, Elias with three, Fairhurst with two, and Kath, uh, Catherine Lewis with two three-pointers for six points. On the flip side, Bridgewater Raynham only has two people scoring tonight. Barbara O'Daya with four and Elise McGovern with two. So I know Megan Driscoll is trying to get some ball movement and trying to get some uh, passing going on. I hope to get some more fouls. It's, it's only only five fouls in the first period, first quarter. Bridgewater Raynham has three and Lady Boxes have two. Lady Boxers, three, one, two, three. Lady Boxers, 
Looks like Laya Perito is coming into the game for the Lady Boxers. And we saw in that first portion of the first quarter, the offense was running through her underneath the basket. So you have to wonder if we're going to see a man defense or maybe a zone defense coming up for the BR Lady Trojans here. Yeah, two, two of the big girls for the bo Lady Boxers, Tony Fairhurst and uh, number 21, uh, Nadia Montero, both on the bench right now. I'm sorry, N Nadia is out there. Passes it back to <laughs> looks like some school yard basketball there, just throwing it up. Canelli over to Riggy back to Canelli, lets it fly. Three pointer is good. Good job by Canelli losing her defender, allowing more than enough time to launch that three. Those three pointers bring you back quickly. They're only down by six. Oh, a nice play by Odaya. She taps it back to one of her, one of her teammates. Keneally has the ball on the, near the baseline, passes it over. Etronacy can't quite get the roll. Silver Moore with the ball back over to Montero. Montero puts in for two points for the Lady Boxers. Kelly on the baseline. Trojans back on numbers. Montero with a nice move. So nine, Trojans chasing 10 points right now. It's 19-9, favor of the Lady Boxes. Right now you have to wonder if we're good. Uh, Coach Riscoll is gonna start drawing up plays that don't involve Keneally scoring because on that last drive, if you watched on the near side, she was driving the basket. She brought three defenders along her. Yeah. If you can create that sort of defensive um, trickery, then eventually someone's going to get open either in the paint or from just inside the three-point line. Yeah, if she, she, has more, she has multiple players gu guarding her. There's got to be an open outlet pass available to her. She's going to just be looking for it at the top of the key, other side of the baseline. It's got to be somebody open. Neely, Arrighi, Odaya, McGovern, and Megan Shaughnessy back out on the floor for the Lady Trojans. Come up for the play, a little bit of stack at the top of the key. Pass to McGovern, she's gonna bring it up with a little bit of pressure from the Lady Boxers. Somebody following up that shot. Nice play by Odaya. Gets her hands up. That's just where the height advantage comes into play for the Brock and Boxers, being able to just fight those rebounds away. Lewis has eight points for the game. Odaya gets the rebound here for the Lady Trojans. Back Nice play. Bring it into the paint. Keneally's fouled. Who is his first foul for the Lady Boxers? Might be something to think about later in the game. The uh, Lady Trojans, the three for three from the foul line. Four 
for four. That shows they've done a lot of practice when they get foul shots. That's all foul shots are is practice during the week. Right now it's almost half of our, I should say, a third of BR's offense to those foul shots. Jackson. Bucket for the Lady Boxers. Kevin gets in the corner, back out to Keneally, top of the key. Air ball. Credit Odaya with the important screen there, allowing Keneally a chance to try and get that three-pointer, but you know, what you like to see in these types of games where you're down by 12 points or so is try and force your own offense. There's 30 seconds on the shot clock. Make that extra pass. Just get a little closer and raise that percentage of getting that shot down. Yeah, you get plenty of time. Shaughnessy with the rebound. Over to McGovern. Brings it up on the right side. Over to Page to O'Dyer. Nice save, nice save by Shaughnessy. Goes out of bounds, Kennedy can't, can't quite get to it fast enough. 4.16 to go, Trojans tracing 12, 23-11. Push the by fair as soon as he can't call for anything. Nice rebound by Odaya. Foul. Good play. Good hustle by Barbara Odaya. Went up among the, the tall bridge, the tall Brockton lady boxers, and uh, came down with the rebound. Looking at the flip side, as we pointed out early on. You know, the fouls that don't involve foul shots is allowed Brockton to sort of avoid that full court press right off of a rebounding opportunity. Oh. Picking up another foul with not a second running off the clock. That's Catherine Lewis' second foul, takes her out of the game. Devon broke left and the ball went right. Montoya will inbound, Montero will inbounds in the corner to Jackson. Long range shot by Silver Moore is good. She gets seven points, it's 26 with the Lady Boxers. Dyer top of the key, she goes baseline, goes to the hoop, I'm sorry. No, it looks like she lost control of that. She was yeah, trying to flip it out of her, Slipped out of her hands, it looks like, when she was going up. So more trying to fill up her stat book here. Yeah, she's got the la uh, last two baskets for the Lady Boxers. Got to put it up quick, got to put it up. Three-pointer for... Keneally, her second three of the night. She's got eight points for the Lady Trojans. So the more with the ball, but kicks it back over to Jackson. Inside to Fairhurst. Kicks out. Oh. Nice. Nice defense by the Lady Trojans. I get the inbound with 2.29 to go. Twenty-eight fourteen in favor of the Lady Boxers. And his pass is intercepted. Now 
Tasha Elias with her second bucket of the game. That almost comes down to what I was saying between the first and second quarter for a team like Brockton, a team that's number eight. You know, the game will slow down for you, and that's where you see steals like that coming up for Elias, being able to just dribble right. all, all by herself, basically. Tasha Elias just intercepted, just had that play in mind. She was two steps ahead of anybody nearby. That's Ashley Rose's first points of the night. And good play there, getting deep inside the paint. Nice tip by Barbara O'Dyer. Govern brings the ball up. Keneally shots off the mark. Oh, nice bucket by Montero. She has a foul shot to follow. Kevin's first team fourth foul. Gives Montero a chance to make it a three point play. She's got seven points in the game. 33-16, a 17-point lead for the Lady Boxers. It's been that player we've been saying to watch out for, number 35, Elia Brittle, but she doesn't get that shot to fall down. Yeah, she's not, she probably doesn't shoot from the left-hand side too much. Where the Lady Trojan needs to start sort of moving around a little bit. Yeah, trying to make Brockton work for those defensive turnovers. Yeah, they're kind of standing still there in the, in the paint. Jackson. Nice hustle by Kelly Page. Not really sure if you can hear over the microphone or not, but uh, Megan Driscoll telling her team to motion in the paint. That's where a team like Rockton will certainly out-rebound you, and that's where mistakes will be made. If you, get a, if you try and make a dicey pass, a random hand going into the pass there, that'll easily turn the points off turnovers. Got a block by Tony Fairhurst. That's her second. Sophia Perez with the ball, brings it up. Oh, just couldn't, couldn't quite get that ball with her feet in the air. She had her feet down, she's called being out of bounds. Jackson brings the ball up. Perez at the top of the key. Yeah, hers. Oh, nice bucket. Going to the half, 37-16, Brockton in front. First thing that comes to mind if you're the BR Lady Trojans looking for improvements in the second half is, you know, don't look at the scoreboard at this point. Just try and make this a game of runs. You know, we saw in the start of the first and second quarter, the BR coming out a 4-0 run to start the game off and you know a quick Bible run or something like that and to start of the second quarter. At this point, just sort of work on your own game and work on moving yourself around on the place because that's where Brockton is getting most of their points on the offensive side of the ball by just sort of moving and making those moving passes. If you're BR, you can't really just sit there and wait for something to happen. Yeah, you're gonna force something. Move, get some bodies moving in the paint so you can have some passes, some clear cut passes. So 37-16, our score at the half. Brockton in front. We'll be back in just a bit with second half action from BR. Taylor, the tape here, John. Uh, the Lady, Lady Box is six players in, in the scoring column. Janesha Moore with nine. Catherine Lewis with eight. Nadia Montero with seven. Natasha Elias with five. And then 
Jelani Jackson and Tony Fairs each with four. For the flip side in the uh, Lady Trojans, Emily Keneally with eight, Barbara O'Day with four, and Elise McGovern with three, and Ashley Rose with two. So the Trojans have a lot to make up here. They're down by 21, 37-16. At this point here, if you're BA, you just have to sort of take what Brockman has done. You know, making passes on the fly, not really waiting for your offense to get set. What we saw in the first half is a BR offense that sort of tried to play conventional 1960s sort of basketball. You know, just sort of sit there, wait for something to happen somewhere near the backboard. And Lady Boxes got their hands up and the, and the passes are being made. If, you know, they're just forced to pass there. Keneally forced to pass inside. That just wasn't there. Silvermore brings the ball up for the Lady Boxers. Back over to Jackson. Jackson back over to Silvermore. Top of the key. Aaliyah Brito with her first bucket of the game. Keneally. Brings it up top of the key, looking for a pass. She has one on the side to Tesla Narigi. Shots off the mark. Barbara Gaia tries to handle the rebound, can't quite get to it. Lady Boxes will bring it up. 6.47 to go in the third period. Jackson top of the key, out by Riggi. I'm sorry, a little bit outside near center court. Silvermore. Nice rebound by Fairhurst. Back out to Jackson, she drives. Little bunny, again Fairhurst with the rebound. She puts it back and she scores. That's where size just made up there. She just reached up with her, with her arms and got that ball. Going top of the key to McNeely. Guided by Silvermore, back over to Origi. She's got Jackson on her. Oh, this is the handle, it's gonna be a Lady Boxer's ball. Right there, even though it was a turnover, there were some learning points there. BR started using more screens than what, we, than what we've seen in the first half. That's gonna be very important, especially as you go later in the season, you know, because there are obviously more games besides this one here tonight. You know, right now, you start using this game more of, a, more of a learning experience than an actual ball. Off the glass, Catherine Lewis. Three boxes out hustling for the ball. Pass ahead to Silver Moore. Blocked by Megan Shaughnessy. Good foul there by Shaughnessy. The last thing you want to do on a fast break is allow someone to just blow right by you and get two points. Now at the charity stripe, you try and make her sort of earn a little more. Good for those two baskets, those two uh, free throws. 46-16, 30 point, 80 boxer advantage. Kevin brings it up. Silvermore intercepts the pass made to Keneally. The Trojans will inbound from the, we have the fan side of the state of the court. I can call it a stadium. It's almost stadium. the size of a football stadium. Uh, pass was intercepted there. Nice, nice play by Catherine Lewis. Into Silvermore, Fairhurst with the rebound. Fairhurst with the rebound. Fairhurst tries to tip it back to another Lady Boxer. It's out to Lady uh, Lisa McGovern. She's going to bring it up. Rachel Fernandez shots off mark. Lewis passes ahead to Silvermore. She brings it out to regroup, top of the key. Nelson's pressing, 438 there. Lady Boggs is enjoying a 30-point advantage. Retreat, 
Trojans get a rebound. Megan Shaughnessy. Elise McGovern will bring it up. It's over to Fernandez. Back over to Origi. A triple drive. Oh, nice shot by Elise McGovern. Something we needed to break that drought of scoring. It almost looked like uh, Rachel Fernandez sort of just slapped that one back to McGovern to get that long shot to go down. What I've noticed on two of the last three or so possessions defensively for the VR Lady Trojans is they keep on crashing the board. That's very important because what that does is it creates more of a numbers situation. And you know, seven times out of 10, if you have a number situation in your favor, you'll probably end up with a ball and you can get some form of a fast break point or two. Lewis with her first free throw. I'm sorry, no, I'm sorry, Silva Moore. Tanisha Silva Moore. She's three for three in this half. Four for four from the free throw line. Trojans inbound. Page brings it up top of the key, McGovern. Thea Hurst, oh, nice. Nice defensive play by the Lady Trojans. Intercepted that pass. Thea Hurst with another rebound. That was one of the better offensive possessions that we've seen tonight. Utilized in the passes, about four or five passes on that drive which allows you a couple more, maybe better looks at getting that basket. Kiersey Joseph enters the game for the first time for the Lady Boxers. Oh. Nice hustle by Megan Shaughnessy, she's on the end line. 3.11 to go. Joseph will inbound to the Lady Boxers. Over to Jackson. Inside to Fairhurst. Turn around jumper is good. First half, Fairhurst has four points in the second half. Governor at the top of the key, guided by Joseph. Across to Kelly Page, back over to Sofia Perez. Side to Fernandez. Ball controlled by Tony Fairhurst, Lady Boxers. Montero with a running jumper. That's no good. Fairhurst controls. Thank God for the three seconds. <laughs> Well, it should be noted that this isn't the only BR Brockton basketball matchup as in the City of Champions. The boys' teams are going at it, and after the first quarter of play, 22 to 12, Brockton on top there. So not a good night to be a Trojans fan. Not However, in terms of basketball, anyway. I was going to say, we do still own the Cape Cod Cafe Cup, so that's something. Nice play by Barbara Dyer. Moves left, moves right. Banks it in and off the glass for her first points of the second half. 50 to 20. Jersey with the ball, top of the key. Kicks it out to Elias. Elias brings it out to Jackson. Oh, nice hustle by Lady. It's gonna be called for nice hustle by Sofia Perez. She dove in the ground for the ball, but she was called for the travel. Jersey inbounds to Jackson. Jersey controls it for the Lady Boxers. Back over to Jackson. Way out near the half court line. Nice intercept. Fernandez for the Bridgewater Raynham. Is it over to Keating? On the side to Sophie Perez. Inside to Barbara O'Dyer. A little bit strong off the backboard. Nice move by O'Dyer on the Thanks far right. side, just to whip back around. Gotta give her credit for hustle. 
Jackson long range. She's getting a triple drive. Perez. Serena Ramato, new players checking in for the Lady Boxes, and well, they should. Up by 30, they should have a lot of subs in. Jersey controls it over to Ramato, back out to Jackson. Oh. Fairhurst over the back. I have to credit Jackson with driving into the basket. It almost looks like what a, you'd see it maybe in a college basketball game. So they're bringing it back around the back and then trying to go for the two points. Fernandez back out to Page. Page's three pointer is good. Kelly Page's first point of the night, first points of the night. First thing you notice about that three-point attempt is right after Kelly Page shot that ball, she was going right back in for the rebound. Say, so follow your shots. Teach you that. Oh, Bridgewater random ball. Pass a little bit too strong to Kelly Amato. Fairhurst. Try to feed it to her, but not for fingertips. Lady Trojans bring it up with 18 seconds to go. Inside to Odaya. They gotta get that ball up high for her. She can't be going down like that. Nice play by Barbara Odaya, presence of mind to put it back off the glass. Seven seconds to go. Trojans cut it to a 25 point differential. Jersey lets it fly. End of three periods. Lady boxes 50, Lady Trojans 25. Some, hi some highlights there, at least the Lady, Lady Trojans are moving the ball around, they're fighting for rebounds. Barbara O'Dyer, uh, you know, Kelly Page finding the scoring sheet, so we're seeing some players touching the ball, and that's a good sign. Makes you sort of think, we saw what we saw in the third quarter, maybe back in the first or second, maybe it wouldn't be the score that you're seeing on the school board right now, it might be a little bit closer, but right now, you know, I, I keep pointing it out every basketball game I do, don't look at the school board. Right now, it's an eight-minute game. If you you know, there can still be positives taking out if you do win this fourth quarter. Yeah, win this quarter, and that's a, that's a plus for the, for the Lady Trojans. And you know what? Honestly, compared to what Brockton has faced the past three games or so, BR most likely will probably pass what Aponiquit did, what Durfee did, what New Bedford did. You know, 29, 28, 28 points respectively through a fourth quarter, excuse me, through a four quarter effort. Absolutely. So it's some. See if the Lady Trojans come out with some fire in the fourth period here. Fourth period. And uh, nibble away at that 25-point uh, differential. Inbounds, gives it up to McGovern. Over to Fernandez. Trying to lead, trying to lead Barbara Odai. A little bit too strong on the pass. Right idea though, she had the in, inside presence, inside position on that, uh, she got the ball. Jackson brings the ball up, gets a screen from Brito. Lewis with that deep rebound into into Silvermore, back out to Silvermore from three point land. McGovern has a pass to Fernandez in the corner to Perez. Ball is short. Silvermore grabs the rebound for the Lady Boxers, brings it up over the half court corner. Back out to Silvermore. She lets it fly. Fairhurst with the putback is good. Boy, Fairhurst is a real good player. She play, you know, she plays strong on both ends of the court. Here she has put the putback here. She gets six second half points. So 
Sarah Moore with the rebound. He passed to Lewis. Lewis lets it fly. Fia Harris back to Jackson. Jackson's three pointer is good. 55 25, back to a 30 point differential. 6.25 to go. It's difficult when you only have one tall player on your team like BR does. Barbara Rodai coming in with 6 2. Kelly Page's second three pointer of the half. Silvermore with the ball, top of the key. Guided by McGovern. Goes right. Tries to go over Odaya. Fernandez, oh. Push by Brito. It's only the second boxer foul in the night. First foul on Brito. Hardly seems fair. It's almost like the BTV version of Tommy Heinz. Origi with the ball over the, guided by Jackson. Over to Shaughnessy, over to McGovern. Page top, outside, guarded. Riggy back with the ball, but guarded by Jackson, in, inside to Odaya. Put back, oh, nice, nice effort by Barbara Odaya. Good job by the Lady Trojans, having two players right behind Odaya trying to secure that rebound. As we've seen about two or three times tonight, Odaya has to reach down for that rebound. When that happens, that allows Brock to get another defender on her. Solid game for Barbara O'Dyer. Four first half points. She's got four and five in the second half. Make it six. Ten points in the game for O'Dyer. 5.34 to go. Intercepted by Elise McGovern. Riggy with the putback. O'Dyer with another putback. It's good. That's what happens when you crash the board. You have number advantage in your favor. You know, having a die right behind you to just sort of toss it back in, that certainly helps you out. And I'd say right before the fourth quarter, BR has you know, done the most damage to Brockton so far in the past four games with their 32 points. Nice play by Odaya. Cuts off Silva Moore. Ball out to Montero, back to Jackson, out to Silvermore. She's going to launch it. Short. It was tipped. Oh, too bad. Canadian fought for that. Shaughnessy fought for that rebound, went off her fingertips. Wholesale changes for the Lady Boxers. Brito back in. It's the rebound, Odaya's gonna be called for the push. Keneally called, her first. Tough for sure be calling Odaya. Brito misses the first. Riggy brings it up over to Keneally, back over to Melissa McGovern. Gets her own rebound. Awesome play. Oh, ball tipped by Silva Moore. She's everywhere. Gets it too, too deep. Riggy call for her second foul. Sends Brito bit to the line for two. <laughs> Evan gets a seat. 25. Carla Keating. Carly Keating comes in. Fought for the 
inbound, the jump ball tied up. Brockton advantage the low inbounds. And Ashley Rose back in for Bridgewater Rainham along with Haley Powers. Air malfunction on the court. Sure, you can attest to those problems happening to you, right? Yeah, all the time. <laughs> Lewis kicks it out to Silvermore. Silvermore guided by Ashley Rose. Kicks it inbounds to Brito. Back out to <laughs> Lewis for a three pointer. That's her fourth three pointer of the night. Ball and ball and inbounds into Rose. Out to the top of the key to Haley Powers. Back out to Rose. Trojans beat the pre beat that uh, with that little flex there. Back and forth. Uh, Powers scores her first bucket of. I'm sorry, Carly Keating, her first bucket of the night. Megan Shaughnessy calls for the hand check. Of all the, all the penalties going on out there, I think the hand check's the least of the one we're looking for right now. All kinds of bodies banging out there. Jackson with the ball, gives it into Montero to Brito. Oh, nice block by Barbara Hordaya. Off the mark. Good rebound by the Lady Trojans. Haley Powers brings it up. Guarded by Elias. Over to Ashley Rose. Back to Powers, trying to get into Odaya. Kick. Too strong a pass. Catherine Lewis's pass can't be recovered by Elias. The Lady Trojans bringing it up with 2.51 to go. Got it down to 25. What do you think, John? It's not 34 like the last meeting, but there are still, you know, there's still bright spots. You know, in the second half, we did see BR crashing the boards, you know, fighting for those rebounds a little more than what we saw in the first half. So, you know, there is still some things that you can take from this oh. game. Elias here kind of waiting for a pass and just slipped and fell down. Turnover, Lady Trojans will inbound. Megan Shaughnessy, far side. Up to Carly Keating, she'll bring over the timeline. Down to Powers. Oh, can't quite get the roll. Elias with a strong rebound for the Lady Boxers. Up to Jackson. Pass off the mark. I was saying it was tipped by one of the Trojans. As we mentioned, the boys are in action against the Brockton Boxers. I believe we'll have that game here on BTV. Well, it's this game that you are watching, obviously. Bring a little strong off the route, off the backboard. Shaughnessy with the rebound for Lady Trojans. Over to Keneally. Keneally brings it up. Car Carly Keating with the ball. Nice hustle by... Nice hustle by, hustle by Ashley Rose. She saves it, but the box is intercept. Elias with the ball, brings it up over in the corner to Jer Joseph. Montero with, lets it fly. Oh. Not a good sign. The ball stuck there. Does that count for four? Or? I don't know. It should be, a, should, should be some kind of violation. I don't think it's a violation. I think that's more of a talent. I mean, we'll see how talented this guy is. Okay, he did it. Because he's more than just a pretty face out there. Have you ever had to do that? No, we always said somebody on the floor to get it. <laughs> <laughs> just don't want to stop for that embarrassment if you miss it completely. No. You know, there's a slide there by the Lady Boxes. No traveling on them. Nice. 
Give and go by Ashley Rose. Gives it up to uh, Emily Keneally for her bu for a bucket. That's going to be a 45 second period that the coaching staff really looks at and tells the team that, that, they, that, that they did really well there. Nice hustle, nice keep. Keneally there, nice hustle into the backboard. Keating over to Rose, penetrates. Oh, oh nice hustle, nice, you know, that's what you wanted. You wanted this throughout the whole game. Be a different score up there right now. Haley Powers, Carly Keating, everybody fighting for the ball. Down to a 23 point advantage. You look at the second half, if my math is correct, you know, you're looking at about a 22 20 score between the uh, third and fourth quarters between these two teams. Brito lets it fly, she gets her own rebound. Box out is right. Montero with the shot, gets it. Well, tonight we saw why the Brockton Boxes are ranked number eighth by a couple of the polls here in Massachusetts. A performance like we saw here tonight. That was a they perfect. Most likely are moving up. Perfect chance for a give and go. Ashley Rose passed it out to Ken, uh, to Keneally. Didn't give it back. Keneally has it. She puts the bucket up. Probably the last score of the night for the Lady Trojans. So this turned into a night more of learning experiences than maybe coming out and winning a game. Now it's going to be very important to see how this BR Lady Trojans team bounces back from this performance. You're looking at a team that went close to, what, 3-1 and one or so, something like that, after their first game against Brockton. Do we see that performance coming out uh, following this game? Time will only tell, but, you know, give credit to the Lady Trojans. They came out in the second half. They wanted to stay a little bit more competitive than what they were in the first. What do you have for a final score? They took it off the board so fast. All I know is a 23-point victory for the Brockton Lady Boxers. Let's say 59-36. Hey, that sounds close enough to me. Why not? Hey, Trojans have a couple of bright spots. Barbara and I with 12 points. Emily Keneally with 12. And they get a counteract the Lady Boxers. Uh, Catherine Lewis with 14. Uh, Janisha Silvermore with 13. And Tony Fairhurst with 10. So... You know, there's some t uh, definitely a talented team. Lady, Lady Trojans have a way to go, but they do have, as John said, a feather in their cap. They didn't get beat by more than 30, and uh, two other teams can't say that from the big three. That'll do it for us. So Brockton goes to 8-2. and two. Meanwhile, the BR Lady Trojans fall to 7-3. and three. They are still 2-0. and oh. Both teams, perfect 2-0 and oh in conference play. That'll do it for us tonight here from BR High School. For Skip Crossman and Jeff Fowler, our cameraman, I am John Luck. Thanks for watching.